Hello, I'm Wheelgun Dan. Today I would like to talk to you about LED lighting versus traditional incandescent light bulbs. Normal, everyday light bulbs that have been around for a very, very long time. So, in that, I believe there's also something of civic responsibility that's kind of important to me. I'd like to share with you my thoughts on that subject and talk about the differences between LED light bulbs and conventional incandescent ordinary everyday light bulbs that have been around for a long, long time. So before I get started, I want to let you know that you can always go to wheelgundan.com for all my latest activities and offerings. And I also want to let you know that I am not a spokesperson for Cree light bulbs. I have bought them for many years. When I was setting up this studio, I had some questions and concerns about the lighting and stuff like that. I can go into that in greater detail later you know, towards the end of this video, but I did contact their customer support through Facebook. They were very, very helpful, and they sent me a whole bunch of light bulbs in addition to the light bulbs I had already been using, um, nitpicky technical stuff. I'll go into the details, but they were very, very helpful, and they helped in the building of this little TV studio that I have here, Wheel Gun Dan's secret hideout. So that's what these are. These are Cree LED light bulbs. I typically buy them at like Home Depot. Um, there's a lot of other uses that, you know, that I'll go into later. But for right now, let's talk about, uh, perhaps you're considering the idea of using LED light bulbs instead of traditional, normal, everyday light bulbs. Normal, everyday light bulbs are, what, maybe 25 cents a bulb or something like that. And LED light bulbs can go anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to $20 a piece, I suppose, something like that. So I have been buying Cree light bulbs for it seems like 20 years. I don't know exactly, but, uh, so I stuck with the brand. Um, if you are looking at led light bulbs, some, some of the different options are, there's different things you should consider. So why would you pay 10 to $20 for a light bulb when you can get a incandescent L, uh, regular ordinary light bulb for 25 cents. So that's one of the things that is, uh, is a pretty important thing to think about because it's not just the cost of the bulb, it's how much does it cost to run that bulb over the course of a year. So the difference between the two, a regular ordinary light bulb it uses a staggering amount of electricity, a lot of power. And out of that, now I'm going to use some very, very loose terms here just to convey the point. So if you have a calculator or anything, don't, don't hold me to the exact numbers. I'm not quoting you exact specific statistics. I'm quoting you the concept. I'm, I'm communicating to you the concept. So ballpark, somewhere around maybe 10% uh, uh, of light you get out of a normal LED light bulb versus how much electricity it uses. So you use basically this much electricity and you only get this much actual light out of a normal everyday incandescent light bulb. So the rest is converted to heat energy. So basically the light bulb, it takes electrical energy and converts it to both light, a little bit, and heat, both of these things at the same time. So there's a huge power savings with LED light bulbs where you barely use any electricity at all, relatively speaking, just, just hardly any. So you could maybe spend, you know, 10 to $20 on a light bulb, an LED light bulb, but your cost of 
using that light bulb over the course of an entire year would be still pennies or maybe a couple dollars or something like that. I think one of these boxes said, said something to the effect of how much power it uses. And so it, it uses very, it, it does not, pro it produces a lot of light, barely any heat, it, a little bit of heat, but not that much. Um, a lot more heat when you got as many lights <laughs> as I do here. Eventually the lights do start to get hot only because they're heating up. Anyways, they're heating up the, uh, I've got these, uh, these reflectors around there. And so the base of the bulb heats up a little bit, heats the reflector, the reflector and all these magnified over the course of time, it gets pretty hot, but nowhere near as hot as traditional bulbs. So you say, well, maybe you don't care about the, uh, the power savings. Maybe, you know, you've got a lot of money. You're a rich guy. You've got all the money in the world and you don't care. Uh, you can, you can afford whatever the power bill is. You don't care. So, okay. One of the things that, that you should consider this is like my biggest point, so I'm starting with this first, and then we can drill down with the other things later. The biggest thing is, if you look at the, uh, the power stations, the power plants that power whatever particular city you happen to be living in, it doesn't matter if there's a dam nearby and it's produced, you know. A power plant, whichever power plant, supplies power to your residence or your community is capable of only producing so much power. There are times where the demand for power increases. There are times where that source of power, that power plant, may struggle to provide enough power for the demand of everybody. So it's not just you, it's everybody in your community is demanding power from the power, the, the power company in order to do things that are important. You know, like whether it's keep your refrigerator and freezer cold for air conditioning or heating if it's the dead of winter. If you consider the idea that if people demand less power, there'll be more power available for everyone else because the capability of the power plant is not going to change. It can only produce however much power that power plant can produce. The demand is what fluctuates. So if the demand, let's say there's, uh, you know, blizzards or it's on uh, it's unseasonably cold or it's unseasonably hot and you've got everybody demanding lots of power with air conditioning, climate control of some kind. The, the power station, if the power station cannot meet that demand, then we go into a thing called a rolling brownout where the power company will go and say, all right, this section of the grid gets the power shut off for a few hours, then we'll rotate, and then they get that over there. And so that's how they do it. So it means that some people are going to go without power. Maybe that'll be you. I don't know. But if the people collectively, everybody uses less power, doesn't matter if you can afford the power bill or not, if everybody collectively is demanding less power by using uh, a small fraction of what they normally would be using for, you know, lights, for instance, then it puts a far less demand on the power station. And then in those critical times where you need uninterrupted power to your house or your grandma's house or something to keep medical equipment running, to keep the freezer with the frozen foods cold, the refrigerator to keep stuff cold, to keep your climate control at a manageable uh, temperature and all that. If you get to a situation where you really, really, really need that power to not be interrupted, 
that's where all of this becomes really, really important. So it doesn't matter if you can pay the power bill or not. It, it, what matters is that you are only demanding from the power grid the amount of power that you need in order to uh, take care of whatever you're doing. Now, if um, maybe, for instance, money is uh, important to you and you don't have an infinite supply of money and saving money is important to you, look, consider this. Running a single incandescent bulb, even though it may cost you like 25 cents or something, over the course of a year could cost you literally hundreds of dollars per bulb to run that normal incandescent light bulb versus an LED light bulb, pennies, few dollars for the entire year. These light bulbs are so efficient that um, I've just started leaving the uh, perimeter lights on 24 hours a day, uh, you know, as part of my uh, security posture of my secret hideout here and everything, you know, um, you, you know, keep the yards lit, keep, you know, you make sure, you know, I, I want to be able to see, you know, fence lines and if there's any rustlers, prowlers, bad guys, rapscallions that are sneaking in, uninvited, uninvited guests. I want to know about it. So I keep the perimeter lights on. You know, there's LED lights, and I keep the, them running year-round, day and night. I just leave the switch on. And it costs very, very little money to run that. But, it look... I think that if you or everybody understood that a normal incandescent light bulb is going to literally cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars per year for that, that power bill, I think you would maybe want to avoid wasting all that money. Look, if you've got hundreds and hundreds of dollars per year to throw away, send your money to Wheel Gun Dan. <laughs> I could use a little bit of help. This studio costs way more to build than I thought it would. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, as a matter of fact, hang on. <laughs> you can go to PayPal tip jar at wheelgundan.com you can contribute <laughs> anyways back to business now so um the power savings is is the biggest point that i wanted to make how l little these costs to operate over the course of a year with regard to the power bill. It's total cost of ownership concept, right? These bulbs may, you know, cost over $10 and a uh, regular light bulb may cost 25 cents, but how much does it cost to operate that bulb over the course of a year? That's my biggest point. So other things to consider if you are buying an LED light bulb. LED light bulbs, they come in two different colors of light colors of light. So a traditional incandescent light bulb that wastes a lot of power does have like a yellow kind of a glow to it. Maybe you've never noticed this. Maybe you don't care. Um, to me, I notice. So uh, one of the things that I do is I always buy the daylight bulbs. So the daylight bulbs they have a broader spectrum of colors all combined so that it very closely resembles the natural lighting that you get from a, you know, from the sun. So I, I like nice and bright and clean light. So all the, all the lights here in Wheelgun Dan's secret hideout are these are all leds they're all cree so that is one of the things that you have to pay attention to when you are 
buying LED light bulbs, you have to read the box and make sure it says either um, soft white, they sometimes call it, which is another way of saying yellow. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how it's. I just look for the word daylight because that's all I care about. Um, one thing about these, though, I think I haven't confirmed this yet, but they may broadcast a tiny bit of a radio frequency when they're being used. And so I do not use these in an application such as a garage door opener because the garage door opener, if you put an LED light bulb in there, it can interfere with the radio transmission to your remote control to open your garage door. So that's not a place where I would use an LED light bulb. But my residence, inside the residence, outside the residence, they make them in different powers. Um, and not only that, but there's a lot of decorative light bulbs that that they are making nowadays that are LED that look like old timey, um, you know, like, you know, really old 1800s or whenever Edison was making the first light bulbs. They've got some vintage style light bulbs that look like those old timey light bulbs, but they're LEDs. That's a neat trick. I don't know how they do that. Anyway, so... Aside from that, those are the two biggest considerations is how much power and what color of the light is it that you would like to use. Um, I'll go into some detail now about how Cree helped me with setting up this studio here. Um, but but that's, that's basically it. So if you are going to buy LEDs, I would encourage you to buy LED light bulbs, uh, Cree. I'm a big fan of Cree. There's other brands that are out there. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about, if you're still with me, let me tell you a little bit about the, um, the building of the studio here. The, um, so I, I have a background that involves m many, many <laughs> trades. And so I do have some experience in uh, professional photography and photo editing. And so the color of the light's very important to me. So this is where we get totally geeky. And, you know, if you're bored, stick around, right? Um, so I've already made all my major points. So I have been using Cree light bulbs for many years, as I was telling you. I always use the uh, LED light bulbs. But the... Uh, I wound up getting a new batch of LED light bulbs and I put, I installed one in close proximity to another one, an old one and a new one. And the color of light was different. And so I had, this caused me a great concern because I wasn't sure that I liked the new color better or was wondering, are my eyes playing tricks on me? Did something go bad? I didn't know what happened. So I contacted Cree through Facebook and I wound up talking to someone from their customer support and they told me that um, they were going to help me figure out how to get this studio built and lit up properly. I kind of like the way that the uh, the place turned out. I think it looks really good. You see the, you know, the white on the uh, the flag here looks pretty good. The colors on the uh, the painting and the flags over here. I like, uh, you know, I I I like the way it all turned out. So they. Uh, Basically, they sent me a box of light bulbs, you know, like any manufactured product. You have old models and you have new models. Um, over the course of year, they get newer models and stuff like that. So it looked like I had a, a new batch from a new model versus an old model or something. So anyway, they sent me a box with some new and old different models and everything. And so I was able to try them out, get the ones that I like the, the most. And um they, you know, they, they didn't charge me anything for the light bulbs. They just sent me a box and I, I, you know, got, got right to work and, uh, here's the results. looks pretty good. So I was very appreciative to Cree. I told them I'd mentioned them in the, uh, video that I was already planning to do. I was already planning to talk about led lights versus, um, you know, traditional incandescent light bulbs. So, um, I told them I'd, I'd give them a, a mention in that. So they were, they were very helpful. So after um, I got through that hump, 
I, uh, I went to the Cree website, the main Cree website, and I discovered that Cree makes LED lights, the actual physical light element, for many, many, many different things. So, for instance, if you were in manufacturing and you wanted to build some kind of product that required some bright LED lights, you could buy the LED light element from Cree and then install it in your own product and everything. So you could manufacture products that need LEDs and you, you could do that. You, they also, there's, uh, they, they got all different kind of light fixtures available for all different kinds of applications. It's a huge it's a huge subject. There's a lot of uh, applications for LED lights, lots and lots and lots of them, not just household light bulbs. That's all I use it for basically. But um, so if I ever, I'm looking for a really bright LED flashlight, for instance, I'll try to look for something that has a Cree LED light bulb in it. Um, at some point I may upgrade my uh, perimeter lighting, whatever the case. Um, so anyways, that's, um, that's, what I wanted to talk to you today about is the, uh, the civic responsibility primarily of using only what power you really need. Uh, it not only saves you money, but it also helps everybody else out because uh, we're, um, um, we're in a situation currently where uh, everybody, for the most part, is relying on uh, power that's supplied from a power station, or even if you have your own generator or you've got solar panels or whatever, you still want to use your power um, efficiently, lack of a better word. So anyway, so that's really all I got for you. I thank you for being with me here today. I'll see if I can tag on some additional things at the end of the video here. Some stuff that I did with the studio. Uh, maybe I'll show you this gun a little more closely because it's uh, it's kind of cool looking. And I like how I've got the, uh, the lights here to show. Um, you know, it, it, all the videos that you see in this location here, they're all Cree light bulbs. And uh, they do a really good job and I'm really happy with them. So I'm not a representative of the company. They're not paying me. They just sent me a box of bulbs to help me out in a situation here where I was building the studio and that's it. So I'm Wheelgun Dan. Visit wheelgundan.com directly for all my latest activities and offerings, as well as to listen to me run my mouth about a lot of different subjects unrelated to light bulbs. So thanks for being here with me today and enjoy your, your day. Howdy. Welcome to my collection of videos. I'm Wheelgun Dan, glad you're here. This collection of videos is basically me talking about America, guns, and freedom. Maybe some other subjects as well. So enjoy yourself, be sure to see all of them, and have a great day.